We now view atherosclerosis as more than a passive deposition of fat in arteries. Indeed, complex interactions between vascular endothelial cells, inflammatory leukocytes, and cholesterol-transporting lipoproteins, as well as other cardiovascular risk factors, lie at the root of atherosclerosis. Thrombosis causes the most dramatic clinical consequence of atherosclerosis, acute coronary syndromes, stroke, and limb ischemia. Imbalance in plasma lipoproteins, particularly a high LDL, high levels of triglyceride-rich lipoproteins such as VLDL and IDL, and low levels of HDL contribute importantly to atherosclerosis. All cells require cholesterol, and lipoproteins normally function to package this insoluble molecule in a form readily transported in the blood. However, factors such as an unhealthy diet or genetic predisposition overload this essential lipid transport pathway and contribute to the dyslipidemia that promotes atherosclerotic disease. The body's management of cholesterol begins in the liver. High LDL levels can result from excessive production of triglyceride-rich VLDL, as well as inadequate uptake of LDL by liver and peripheral cells due to low number of, or genetic defects in, LDL receptors. Statins, by inhibiting cholesterol production in the liver, can lower LDL levels, improve the overall lipoprotein profile, and significantly reduce clinical cardiovascular events in several ways. Synthesis of cholesterol begins in the cytosol. When three molecules of acetyl-coenzyme A interact to form hydroxymethylglutaryl-CoA, HMG-CoA, HMG-CoA then reacts with HMG-CoA reductase, an enzyme that resides in the membrane of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The reductase is a tetrameric macromolecule. The binding pocket for HMG-CoA lies deep within each monomer, with a neighboring monomer contributing a few additional binding interactions. In total, the tetramer has four pockets, one within each monomer. HMG-CoA reductase, using NADPH, catalyzes the reduction of HMG-CoA to mevalonate. After leaving the enzyme, mevalonate undergoes many subsequent transformations to form other sterol precursors, and ultimately cholesterol. Statins competitively bind to the active site of HMG-CoA reductase. By blocking the binding of HMG-CoA, statins inhibit the conversion of HMG-CoA to mevalonate, and therefore the pathway that leads to cholesterol. Let's examine more closely the binding interaction between statins and HMG-CoA reductase. Statins enter a narrow binding pocket and form 8 to 12 bonding interactions with hydrophobic moieties lining the pocket. The HMG-CoA reductase pocket undergoes a conformational change, which envelops the bulky statin structure and further tightens the interaction. Here we can see the actual molecular detail of a statin binding to the active site. Statin therapy inhibits intracellular cholesterol synthesis, causing cholesterol levels in the cell to fall. Cells must regulate cholesterol very closely. Changes in cholesterol levels trigger sensing mechanisms, including a set of proteins bound to intracellular membranes called sterol regulatory element binding proteins, or SREBPs. In particular, activation of SREBPs by low cholesterol increases transcription of the LDL receptor gene. The consequent rise in LDL receptor number promotes capture of LDL and VLDL from the blood to maintain cellular cholesterol homeostasis. 
SREBPs also increase the synthesis of HMG-CoA reductase itself. In addition, reduced cellular pools of cholesterol slow the rate of VLDL production. Statin therapy can therefore lower blood VLDL levels. As a result, levels of HDL may rise because of reduced transfer of cholesterol ester from HDL to VLDL by the cholesterol ester transfer protein. Many studies suggest that the changes in blood lipoproteins, particularly LDL lowering, modulate inflammatory processes and thereby stabilize atherosclerotic plaques. Reduced deposition of LDL interrupts the complex cascade of pathogenic events that starts with the oxidation of LDL and finally forms unstable thrombosis-prone plaques. Increases in HDL may also stabilize the lesion by enhancing reverse cholesterol transport from the atherosclerotic plaque to the liver. Lowering LDL also increases the availability of nitric oxide, an endogenous vasodilator, and an inhibitor of platelet aggregation and vascular inflammation. Lipid lowering can reduce levels of other inflammatory mediators, including gamma interferon, an inhibitor of collagen formation, and also decrease levels of matrix metalloproteinases, MMPs, that degrade arterial collagen. These changes in collagen metabolism thicken the plaque's protective fibrous cap. The strengthened cap resists rupture, a frequent cause of thrombosis. The possibility that additional non-lipid or pleiotropic effects of statins contribute to their therapeutic benefit is an intriguing subject of investigation. Statins may influence cellular signaling through reduction of intracellular cholesterol precursors. These precursors, such as geronyl geronyl pyrophosphate, or GGPP, and farnesyl pyrophosphate, or FPP, modulate activity of small G proteins. For example, reduced levels of GGPP can inhibit the G protein Rho, resulting in greater expression of the enzyme nitric oxide synthase that produces nitric oxide. By reducing levels of the procoagulant tissue factor, decreasing Pi-1, the inhibitor of tissue plasminogen activator, and lowering platelet activation, statins may also decrease thrombotic tendency. Lipid lowering may also limit endothelial production of superoxide anion and minimize oxidation of LDL. To summarize, the basic mechanisms described in this animation provide a foundation for us to understand how statins modify atherosclerosis, thereby improving clinical outcomes in patients at risk for cardiovascular disease.